From Orchard Park, New York, CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. With a Buffalo win, they capture the AFC East title, and New England is in Miami playing at the same time. So, a win or a Patriot loss, it's the Bills for a second consecutive year in the AFC East with Trent Green and on the sideline, Melanie Collins, Kevin Harlan. 34 degrees, the wind chill makes it 22. Winds are out of the west at 21 miles an hour. We've had the flip of the coin. The Jets have won and they have deferred. They'll take the second half and the Bills will receive. And you can see on the ground, and through the hands of Matt Breida, who will retrieve it in the end zone with a touchback. It'll go to the 25-yard line, and it'll be a first and 10 for the Buffalo Bills. Hi, everyone, with Trent Green, Kevin Harlan, and uh, it's the first time the Bills have a chance to capture a division title at home since 1995. And Kevin, we're just impressed. You, you said how cold it is. It's below freezing from a wind chill standpoint. How many fans showed up here today? They want to be a part of this history. Well, they're going to see a lot, certainly. This is the second and final meeting with these two teams, obviously, and on a first and 10, with heavy pressure put on them right there by Franklin Myers, they go to Dawson Knox. The tight end is out of bounds and Mosley is the one who steered him that way with a catch and run on the game's opening play of 19 yards to the 45. When you can see calling a screen on the opening play they were anticipating the Jets bringing pressure and getting after it and we look at the numbers that Josh Allen has put up this season another 4,000 yard passing season and how about that 40 total touchdowns 34 through the air and six on the ground. He is coming off a rough afternoon last week with three interceptions against the Atlanta Falcons. He is. He's had 15 interceptions this season, which is the most he's had in his career, but he's had a lot of bad weather games here in Buffalo. Running back is Singletary, and he gets the call, and a black up there by the left tackle, Deion Dawkins, and down he goes. Fought well that time. Hit by Ronnie Blair off that defensive line, just elevated, and a gain of two. Well, the offensive line is together, Trent, for a second consecutive week. Well, we see Deion Dawkins over at left tackle making the Pro Bowl, and they've only got a couple Pro Bowlers on that offensive side. There's Stephon Diggs, the, the other Pro Bowler, and they've been able to put together a top-five offense, having some consistency, and as you said, Kevin, getting everybody back healthy. There is Singletary in the backfield, second down and eight. And a block by Dawkins and a quick catch here by Beasley going inside hit by CJ Mosley picks up six a couple yards shy of a first down the strength of this Jets defense their defensive line Trent well it is they like to get after the quarterback Quinn and Williams is back and, and work in the middle of the field there and then of course their linebacker CJ Mosley was voted the team MVP this past week and he said what great pride he has and then just such a young secondary you see the two rookies but not a lot of experience back there that was one area Robert Sala said has improved the most was that secondary growing in because of that youth. Hey, kill, 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 Tommy kill, kill, Doyle kill, kill. is an extra lineman, number 72. It is third down and two. Singletary into the thicket. Oh, and he busts free. And it's a foot race down the side. And knocked out of bounds by Pinnock. Takes it all the way near the 10 on a 39 yard gallop. It'll be first and goal. Bills want to run that time for Singletary. Great job up front. That left side of the line collapses the entire defense down. So Singletary bounces outside. Then he sees that lane to get through and get up to that next level. Able to get it down at the 10 yard line. Here's the leading rusher. Got a couple 20 yard runs Singletary did last week against Atlanta. First and goal, Singletary. Right around his ankles, he finds Nathan Shepard at the line of scrimmage. Second down and goal. Singletary had his best game, 110 yards on the ground against the Denver Broncos for this top 10 offense. And they've been a top 10 offense since week four. Well, just the running game has gotten going, especially Devin Singletary. When you look at the numbers he's put up the last few weeks, 
bringing some balance. We, we know what type of, of runner Josh Allen is. It's nice to have that balance with Devin Singletary. Second down, goal at the 10. Singletary again nicely read that time and brought down for no gain on the play. And again, it's Nathan Shepard. Off that line, he started a couple weeks ago, comes up with another tackle in this goal-to-go situation. Well, this would be a, this would be a great stop for the Jets' defense if they're able to get this done. You see the counter there and tackle in the backfield. Nowhere for him to go. Look at Robert Sala in his first season. Hey, Linda, 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 it's Linda, third Linda. and goal at the 10. To the air, Allen stiff arming his way from one defender. Throws in there, grabbed by Diggs. Was he in? No, on the chalk, incomplete. Heavily pressured was quarterback Josh Allen. And they'll bring out the field goal unit and try for three, but they'll certainly look at this again, perhaps. Just a matter, it looks like the one foot's down. You can see the strength of Allen to get rid of this ball. One foot is that back foot dragging when he makes the catch. The quarterback was pressured by Quincy Williams. By the way, we know that most of you are watching that Baltimore-Pittsburgh game. Pittsburgh has won, and John Hussey, our referee, has the ball won. Well, this will be tight. Elijah Riley was over there. After discussion, it is a touchdown. And good for a 10-yard touchdown in the game opening drive. Clearly, they'll review the Bills offense right now with their eighth opening drive touchdown this season. That is an NFL high. So that right foot gets down before it hits the white chalk. It was determined that that right, that the right, the left foot gets down. The right foot is dragging when he catches it. What the replay is going to have to determine is did that back foot, that right foot, did it come off the ground before possession was gained? The officials on the field confirmed it as a touchdown. Now they're waiting for the booth to confirm it. The Pro Bowler digs over a thousand yards again. And he's on track to establish a historical record of uh, most receptions by a player in his first two years with a team in NFL history. It is under review. This well, is going to be very close. Well, and it's going to be important because they, they on the field they reversed it to a touchdown. Now there's got to it's got to be conclusive to turn it the other way. So had it stayed incomplete, let's go to New York. Ben and the Steelers not done yet. Overtime, Chris Boswell, 36-yard field goal. Couple of that with an Indy loss, barring the tie tonight with the Chargers in Vegas. Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers will be in the playoffs as a number seven seed. What a game. Back to Kevin Harlan. The Colts have been eliminated. Guys, thank you very much. A lot of moving parts in this day. Buffalo right now is at number three, trying to capture the division. And the Bills can go anywhere from number three down to number six. So there is a lot of wiggle room right there with important games right now, this afternoon, and of course tonight, Chargers and Raiders. Well, and really Does it look like that, that first foot was up? The, the So the left foot's down. It, it gets down before yes. the shock. It's just whether or not that, that right foot that's dragging, does it come off the ground? Gene Steratore, our rules analyst, is looking at this as well. And Gene, what do you see? You know, uh, Trent's done a great job of squaring this up, and it is exactly what he said. Stefan Diggs' his foot is dragging, but it's prior to possession, and then as he begins to control the ball, it is whether that toe is still down or not. And the ruling on the field is very important, which is a Buffalo touchdown. touchdown. Gene, thank you. The 10th touchdown and reception for Diggs. Of Go ahead, Gene. It, yeah, this is a case really of, of the ruling on the field making something clear and obvious to overturn. So the fact that they flipped this to a touchdown in, uh, uh, after consideration of an incompletion, that's why I think they stayed with the score on the play. 
Gene, thank you. Here's Tyler Bass to track on one more for the Buffalo Bills on the game opening drive, a 75-yard drive. It is good. It's with the wind, which will be a factor today. So the quarterback, Josh Allen, Trent Green, throws his 35th touchdown pass of the season. Well, what a good opening drive if you're the Buffalo Bills trying to come out and get some momentum going and start off with the screen, get a nice chunk, and then Singletary with a big run to get you down to the 10-yard line. But then it was the play, the strength of Josh Allen to extend the play, get outside the pocket. And Stephon Diggs making his second Pro Bowl in a row with the toe drag and the touchdown. Josh Allen last week with the three interceptions and no touchdown passes. He did have a couple on the ground, but it wasn't one of his better weeks. In fact, it was one of his lowest passer ratings that he's had as a pro. But they start out the way they needed to. This is the third highest scoring offense in pro football. And with offensive coordinator Brian Dayball calling the plays. The Bills on top on the game opening drive. And as we welcome our new audience, we're in Buffalo in Orchard Park, New York, with the Buffalo Bills on the game opening drive, beginning with a touchback at their own 25 and marching downfield. They had a first and goal at the 10, and the scrambling quarterback, Josh Allen, got a 10 yard touchdown pass, which had to be reviewed to wide receiver Stephon Diggs. If the Bills win. They win the AFC East title for a second consecutive season. This is in the end zone and away. The Bills, as we just mentioned to our original audience, could finish anywhere in the AFC playoff picture from three down to number six. So a lot of moving parts. But Trent, as we just saw with the Pittsburgh win in Baltimore, some of it starting to come together. Well, and if there was any worry, they were going to come out and, and just assume because they beat the Jets earlier this year by 28 points. Was there, there going to be a, a, a setback at the beginning of this game where they're going to not come out energized? I think that was erased right away with that opening drive. Let's see how this number one defense responds. The quarterback is the rookie, Zach Wilson, with the first and ten. Coleman in motion, and here is Michael Carter, who takes it on a first and ten. Gang tackled, as you can see right there, at Oliver among many. No gain on the play. They will stay right at the 25. Zach Wilson, since he's come back from that four-game missed span with a knee injury, has played well. He has. He's played much better, doing a better job of protecting the football. No interceptions in the last four games. And his, his completion percentage has increased. Obviously, the turnovers has, has gone away, and they need to get... They've had some close games the last few weeks. They did get a win a couple weeks ago. You can see the improvement, and I think that's what the Jets are excited about. Second down, long 10, Carter again, blocked there by Barton, and running outside and finding a gap, and bumping his way into the secondary, into Jordan Poyer. It's a nice run near the 33 and again and nine. What about the offensive line of the New York Jets? Well, it, it, there have been some moving pieces. Listen, they've had nine different uh, lineups with that offensive line. And, and Vera Tucky, you can see the rookie has stood out. Michael Carter, who we just saw running the football, has had a very good season. And you consider what they're what they're building on is the young the young players on this team in this lineup. And we've seen vast improvement from those guys throughout the course of the season. Coleman in the backfield, third down and one. Here comes Milano. Wilson's got to make a decision. Now he's back to his 10, and he floats one incomplete to the sideline. As the pressure was heavy, Russo and others were right back there, along with Jerry Hughes to flummox the rookie quarterback. Well, you can see it looks like they end up bringing seven different defenders and putting pressure on Zach Wilson. He, he's got the ability to escape. That's something that they've talked about since he was in college, just the athleticism and his ability to move around, but nowhere to go with the football. Braden Mann will be punting into a 22-mile-an-hour win. He back is Isaiah McKenzie at the 10-20-yard uh, line for the Buffalo Bills. Game's first punt. Boy, 
and gets off a nice punt with the wind grabbing it, throwing it down. You see the roll, and it's going to maroon the Bills inside their seven yard line. A beauty, a 59 yarder by man. Another look coming up of Allen on CBS. Highmark Stadium, Orchard Park, New York, to the sideline. We say good afternoon to Melanie Collins. Hello, Kevin. And the Bills can clinch the division at home in front of Bills Mafia today for the first time in 26 years. We spoke with safety Micah Hyde. He said, I've been to the playoffs eight times. Not once have I ever clinched a division at home. He said, just the thought of it gives me chills. And when you think about what this fan base has been through the last three decades, to be able to do this back-to-back, -back, this time at home, would mean everything to this team and our fan base. Yeah, they talked about it a lot, Mel. Thank you. Single Terry in the backfield with the first and ten and a quick throw outside caught by Diggs as he spun that time by Riley. It's knocked down, of course, by CJ Mosley, close to a 10-yard gain. Trent said it. Mosley was voted the team MVP this week. He's number five. Mosley is in tackles in the NFL. Well, and just his leadership. We talked about uh, how young of a team this is. A lot of rookies playing, a lot of second and third year players playing, and CJ Mosley. Missed the last two years, sat out last year with with, co with the COVID protocols, and then the year before was injured. So he said how special it was to be honored with the MVP from his teammates because he had missed playing with his brothers the last two years. Time out taken by Allen on that first and ten. After Diggs caught and got ten on the first play, and we're halfway through the first quarter. NFL on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Honda, the power of dreams. And by FedEx, where now meets next. That was a Week 10 final with Buffalo crawling all over the Jets. In fact, the defensive coordinator for the Jets, Jeff Ulbrich, Said he was a little bit humiliated. Deep passes with the big lead late in the game. Didn't sit well with the Jets. Here is a first and ten. And after he got by the defense at time of Kyle Phillips, a loss of two on the play by Singletary. Now this is going to surprise some people with the Dolphins. And they're about to halfway through that first quarter down in South Florida with a two touchdown lead on the Patriots. How about that? It's that uh, something? I don't know that early. It's only eight minutes into the game. So you wonder if... Uh, there was a defensive touchdown or a turnover, something to, to set it up. Special teams touchdown. That's they jumped on him early. Second down and twelve. By twenty. Is it? Hawkins will block at the left tackle, and that's where Allen goes, and it's incomplete for Diggs, and the coverage by Eccles, and there goes a flag. Eccles picked off Tom Brady last week. The rookie out of Kent, Tucky is blown over there, and Robert Sala with a quick word to the young player. By the way, we're just finding out there was a pick six thrown by Mac Jones in that game. That was the third, the rookie quarterback of the Fast Patriots is thrown. Defense, number 26. While he plays the spot of the foul, automatic first down. So that's on Eccles. The Miami pick, by the way, was by Xavier Howard. And the 14-0 lead for the Miami Dolphins over New England. So it is a first down. Out to the 25. Bills in their second possession. On the first one, moving 75 yards and got a 10-yard touchdown pass to Diggs. By 20, is that? First and 10. Dumping it off to Singletary, looking for a block. He got one from Bates, and downfield he goes. And he takes it up to the 44-yard line. A 19-yard catch and run to New York and Coach Cowell. Yeah, Kevin and Trent, here's what it is right here. Right there, just baited him right into that cover two right there, Trent. David Howard stepping right in front, 37 yards return, 14-0 Miami over New England. Back to Kevin and Trent. Coach, coach, you know that defense is like disguising things for young quarterbacks, and they, as you said, they baited Mac Jones into that and took advantage of it. It's Diggs with the block from Brown, a stiff arm into Carter. And Diggs held out by Davis and by Carter, the defensive Michael Carter. Michael Carter, the second in that Jet secondary, a catch and run of 11. Put him at the 45 of New York, another first down. 
Well, Stephon Diggs, remember the last time they played, the Jets had 162 yards receiving and has come out in this game, already has a touchdown catch on the first drive, and stiff arm with the spin move, doesn't go out of bounds. His third catch, too, so the most of any player in his first two years with a team in NFL history. He's got 97 catches this season. Right, 20, what's that? Going through the air, 6-6, six six, and this is Zach Moss in for the first time. And the running back, Moss, out of Utah, picks up five to the 40-yard line of New York. And, Kevin, you just said it. Josh Allen was starting off the game 6-6. Six six. We talked to him about the weather he's had to play in here in Buffalo this season with wind, with snow. We had a little bit of, of both in pregame here. We, we, had, we, we had rain, we had wind, we had snow. All white warm-ups were going on. Now it's calmed down, but we hear there's more coming. So Josh Allen has been able to play in all these different uh, types of environment here in Buffalo and starting off today very hot, 6-6. Six it's second down and five, and Moss remains in the backfield. Right 20, what's that? The tackle blocks right there. Bates with the block in the middle. Allen on the move. Downfield to the end zone, and incomplete. He had a couple receivers running parallel, including Gabriel Davis. And I think that's the guy that it was intended for. Incomplete pass. Well, everything's supposed to go to the left here. Watch his eyes. Everything looks to the left. Gabriel Davis is running the dig route on the right. But as soon as they see him flush, Davis breaks off his route and goes to the corner. Diggs comes from the backside. Josh throws it down in there. He says, I put it in position where it's not going to get intercepted, but maybe one of my guys can get to it. But an incomplete. Bryce Hall down there. By the way, we're getting some great videotape work today and all season long from Bill Grittinger, Sean Sperry, and Joel Hahn. Gentlemen, thank you for a wonderful season. Third down and five. Blitz is on. Underneath they go. Digs a fourth catch. Brought down on the play by Pinnock. On third and five, he picks up six. They'll place him at the 34 of the Jets. And Kevin, you know what, what's great about this and, and Stephon Dix is just awareness, field awareness, knowing where the first down line is. Instead of dancing and trying to bounce backwards and end up getting tackled for loss and not getting the first down, he dips his head and goes to get the first down. Four straight seasons over 1,000 yards. And as you said, Kevin, now with that third reception, and now he's even added on top of that, four receptions, setting a record for the most in the two-year period with the team. Singletary in, knocks the tight end with the block, and the running back, Devin Singletary, will take it down to the 29 on a gain of five. Trent, when you look at the power of this Buffalo offense, Mosley made the hit. In the first quarter, Buffalo outscores their opponents 92 to 37 and overall the Bills have the number one point differential in the NFL and when and when they jump on teams quick like that that's what helps your defense when you can get early leads that helps your defense and, and all of a sudden it takes different aspects out of the game and, and they're the number one pass defense because they know teams are going to have to pass and so they can get after the quarterback they can cause turnovers Second down and five with a burst right there. Singletary and around his ankles, Quincy Williams. Gain of six to the 23 of New York. And a nice gain for a first. Bills are moving well. In that first game against the Jets, they had two 100-yard receivers. Diggs with 162, Davis with 105. They're on that same path here this afternoon. First and 10, Singletary. And was brought down. Nice defensive pressure that time. Rankins, no gain on the play. They stay at the 23. Really enjoyed getting a chance to talk to Mitch Morris this week, the center for the Bills, and just the continuity of the offensive line. They've had to shuffle some things up on the front. Deion Dawkins was on the COVID list twice this season. But Darrell Williams, Spencer Brown, the rookie at right tackle, has really developed into a solid player on that right side. It's really coming together for the Bills with three wins in a row heading into today. It's a second down and 10, 11 play of the drive, and downfield he goes. Diggs against Eccles, touchdown. What a throw! 23 yard strike. Stefan Diggs. Tell you what, Kevin.
Kevin, when he released this ball, I wasn't sure Diggs was going to be able to accelerate and go get it, but he catches it with his fingertips. Eccles is in good position, but it's a perfectly thrown ball. Let's see, one foot. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that second one. I don't think that second one got in. Let's see now. Maybe it's on the ground when he catches it. There's one. They'll review. Diggs has already caught a 10-yard touchdown pass today. Will this be his second? They have just overturned the call. Let's go to Gene Steratore for an explanation. Now, although Diggs makes a great catch, in order to be a runner, you've got to complete the catch by getting both feet or a body part in bounds. We know the ball crosses the goal line, but he has not completed the catch until the second foot lands, and we see the left foot in, but the right foot lands out of bounds. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass, guys. Gene, thank you. It'll be third down and 10. Diggs back out there. Zach Moss in the backfield. Another long drive. Diggs has caught two on this drive of 11 and 10. Singletary, a catch and run of 19. Third and 10. A bullet. Knox with Carter right there. So it's incomplete. It's fourth down. Here comes the field goal unit, and the Jets defense holds. I don't know if we caught it or not, but Josh Allen would smacked his helmet as he was running off the field because he saw he saw it too late. The safety rotated down, so that left Diggs one on one on the fade again. So that ball gets knocked away, but he sees Diggs with a step on on, on the left side on Eccles again. Could have taken another shot. Windchill here, 22. Wins out of the West at 21. 41-yard field goal with the wind. Tyler Bass. And it's 10 to nothing, Buffalo. We'll be back to Orchard Park in 30 seconds after this from State Farm. Jay from State Farm, we gotta talk. Yeah, it turns out you guys give everyone great rates. I'm aware. Well, then how come this entire time we've been calling it the Patrick Price? I've literally never called it that. Yeah, you call it the Rogers rate, which is cool. But it's a pretty inaccurate name when Stevie gets it, too. We offer great rates to fit anyone's budget. You should just say that next time. It's the first time I heard about it. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Buffalo Bills have had it twice. They have scored both times on a 10-yard touchdown pass to Diggs and moments ago a 41-yard field goal by Bass. If they win, it'll be their 11th of the season. They'll win the AFC East title for a second consecutive year, and they will have won a division title, Trent, in their stadium in front of their home crowd for the first time since 1995. Well, and you could just feel the energy. and We could feel the energy we're coming in. You know, you, you and I are trying to bundle up and just get into the stadium, trying, trying to stay warm and dry, but these fans were ready and, and cranked up since early this morning. Keelan Cole and Tevin Coleman are back to retrieve the kickoff from the Buffalo Bills. Jets coming in 4 and 12, losing last week to the Buccaneers, or rather, yeah, to the Buccaneers. They played them tough. It's in and out of the end zone, a touchback to the 25. NFL playoffs are here. It all kicks off with Super Wild Card Weekend. Action gets started with a Saturday doubleheader, then a Sunday tripleheader, and for the first time ever, a Wild Card Monday. Three days, six games, one epic weekend. The road to Super Bowl 56 starts right here. Well, now, Kevin, the Jets just need to get something going. They need to get a first down. They had a three and out. The Bills have already had nine minutes more time of possession. So offense, you need to get something going. Give your defense a rest and get adjusted, but need to go down and get some points as well. Michael Carter in the backfield. He is a rookie out of North Carolina. The fake there. Morgan the block. And uh, down low, the catch is made by Jamison Crowder at the 41-yard line off the inactive list. He's missed a couple games with a calf injury. 16-yard pickup. Good blocking by Morgan Moses on that right tackle and a first down. Well, and it's important as we see Crowder go down and get this ball before it hits the turf. You mentioned the fact that he's back after missing a couple games, but they're missing 
a lot of key targets on the offensive side. Corey Davis, they lost earlier in the year. Braxton Berrios, who's had touchdowns in three consecutive games, is out for this one. And the rookie, Elijah Moore, a lot of weapons missing for Zach Wilson. Yep, top three receivers gone. First and ten. And he's got a juggling act, but not reeled in by Tyler Croft. He was activated off the COVID list this week. And here are the three receivers that have been a big part, especially Berrios on special teams. He has had a couple of very good weeks for this Jets team. He has. He's had a phenomenal year in the, in the return game. But you can see the number of receptions, yards, and 11 touchdown receptions that are missing today for Zach Wilson in this Jets offense. But they do bring back Crowder this week after that calf injury. Second down and 10. Probably the number three rookie in terms of yards per game. Brought down initially by Mario Addison. No gain in the play. They stay at the 41. Well, that's one area this season that the Bills' defense has been susceptible is their run defense. You go back to that Indianapolis game, the game that Jonathan Taylor had so many yards and touchdowns in. And They've wanted to focus on that area of their defense because they know you get into the postseason, you've got to be able to defend everything. Doing a much better job so far today. Ty Johnson in the backfield, third down and 10 for Zach Wilson. One of three throwing and into the wind in this first quarter. Ours is the block. He moves up. And look at him, takes his way, swerving for four. Finally brought down in the play by Tremaine Edmonds, the leading tackler for the defense. Snaked his way out to the 45, but shy of the first, it's fourth and six. And another punting in it for the New York Jets. Zach Wilson's mobility on display once again, and, and the fact that he tried to split those guys, I, I, you know, the rationale is go down, especially a guy that's missed four, four games with a PCL injury, but he tried splitting them and going to get the first down. Good tackle by Edmonds. Great man punting for the second time. Oh, that was deflected and hit by Cam Lewis. Cam Lewis blocked it and recovered by Jaquan Johnson. His first block punt for the punter, Braden Mann, since 2016. And the Bills special teams heard from early. Well, the most direct way to get a block is going right up the middle. And that's what the Bills did. Watch right in the middle of the line. Nobody touches him. He weaves his way through there. Great job by Lewis. So they'll take over at the 35 of the Jets. And the quarterback goes wide. And Singletary with that Wildcat, the fake, and the drive. Davis tried to throw a block and read well on the play with a gain of about three and hit by Franklin Myers in the middle of that line to the 32. Quarters come to a close. A block punt by the Bills. A touchdown pass and a field goal. And a 10-0 lead over the Jets on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Consumer Cellular. And by Farmers Insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We begin the second quarter with the Bills at 10 and 6 and after their division title with the win or a Miami loss. First in the New England loss, second down and seven. Outside it goes here to Diggs. Looking for a block from both Singletary and Allen and then he cuts in and gets waylaid on the play by Quinn and Williams. He was activated off the COVID list this week. It's a gain of two. So the Bills get their first block punch since 2016. That sets up this. And uh, here they had a third and five coming up as we start the second, Trent. Well, they've been effective on third down. They scored their first two possessions, so you're going to have these types of numbers, but three or four on third down. I wasn't sure where Dix was going. He ran backwards. I just got through complimenting him, not running backwards, but he was able to make some positive yards. Singletary the back. It's third down and five. 
And he's whacked right off the bat by Mosley. C.J. Mosley stops him right there. And no gain just inside the 30-yard line. The Dolphins were beating the New England Patriots. The last we checked, 14-0. There was a pick six. And so a Bills win or a Patriot loss gives the Bills the AFC East title for a second consecutive season. Well, they're going to keep the offense on the field. Yeah, and they're going to go for it here. This, this, would, this would end up being about a 46-47 yard field goal. This end of the field is going into the wind. So I wonder if that had an impact on Sean McDermott, his decision to not kick the field goal and go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and five. And outside and incomplete. So they have Bryce Hall over there, and they're looking for Davis. And on downs, it will go to the Jets. And the Jets defense holds. Here's a look at C.J. Mosley, the team MVP. And gets just incredible comments from the coaching staff and his teammates about his leadership and how he is on downs. The offense gets it caught with a block on first and ten. Wilson delivers. Keelan Cole makes the grab. Levi Wallace, the tackle, gain of nine near the 40. And Wilson that time dropping his arm a little bit. And a little sidearm sling, throwing the slant in there. They consider you got a rookie quarterback. You've got a rookie running back who's had a very solid first season. And a first-year play caller and offensive coordinator, Mike LaFleur. And now they've all developed and evolved as the season has gone on. Second down and one, Carter. And grabbed on the play by Tremaine Evans. As he got past the 40, picked up two, and has the first down for the Jets. How about, how about Ed Oliver getting through the line? Watch 91, he goes right through. The ball gets flipped in the air. The Jets are lucky that doesn't hit the ground, but Oliver times out the snap perfectly. Nobody touches him. Wow, Carter's very fortunate to get his hands on that ball and secure it. With a handoff here to Tevin Coleman. Locked up, not much there, hit by a couple. Boogie Basham among them, no gain on the play. But the Jets have come out with their coach, Robert Sala, and, and talked about the optimistic things they see, especially this last month or so, and the performance of the quarterback, some of the younger players. And like we said, they played the Buccaneers tough last week. Well, they are very optimistic. You, you see the young talent on the offensive side of the ball. No Elijah Moore today. The defensive side of the ball, their corners and secondary are very young. They know that they've got two picks in the first round, two picks in the second round. They've got 60 million in cap space. There's reason to be optimistic. Crowder wants to throw, but has to get by one landmine after another. Chased by Poyer, now takes it himself and out of bounds as he tried to keep it alive and was looking downfield. The coverage there in the secondary, and they lose three on the play. Kevin, Sean McDermott talked to us about this, and he talked to his defense about this expecting some trick plays from the Jets. They've needed some of that to generate offense all season long. So he wanted his defense to be ready for, for any of it. And they were on that play as there was no one open downfield. Quarterback Zach Wilson in his 13th start today in the NFL and coming off perhaps his best game as a pro. Placing third and 13 with the ball back at the 38. Blocked by McDermott, the left tackle. By Morgan Moses. Here comes the rush by Butler. Down he goes. Hit on the play. Bash him with the sack. Second of the season for sack of the game. And the Bills defense holds in a loss of 14 on the play. Back to the 24. Kevin, coming into today, the Jets had given up or allowed 44 sacks. And some of it is because of the athleticism of Zach Wilson. Instead of going through the progression, sometimes throwing the ball away, understanding an incompletion. His athleticism can extend plays, but it also can hurt him when you get tackled for a big loss. Braden Mann, who had one block the last time, sends this to McKenzie, who has to fall on the ball. And quickly, the defense and the special teams down there. Justin Hardy among them for the Jets. 44-yard punt. A sack right there by the rookie, Basham. Let's go, Buffalo! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
right now. Steve Tasker, one of the greats in the history of the Buffalo Bills and the NFL as a special team. Here's a first and ten. And off to Zach Moss. And stuck on the play with no gain in the play by Riley. Steve, a former colleague of ours at CBS, now doing a lot of radio TV work here in the Buffalo area, and remains one of the best people that has uh, been on our air and uh, that we've met in our trails in the NFL. Club Steve, second down and 10. Underneath Diggs, grabbed right there by Eccles, wrestled down, gain of six to the 36 to New York, James and coach. Bill, you knew New England would be there. Yeah, I knew the running game was there. Brandon Bolden's going to take this cut to the left, go 15 yards, and now New England has cut the deficit. Luke still trailing Miami, 17 to 7. Back to Kevin, Trent, and Melanie. A Patriot loss, guys, thank you. A Patriot loss, and the Bills win the East. Third down and four. They dump it off. Moss again. And Redwell. Carter got in there, made a hit. Also, stopping it initially, C.J. Mosley. He has been all over the place so far with another nice hit to the 39-yard line. That'll be fourth in a yard. Heck of a tackle. Mosley right there in space, not allowing him to get the first down as the Bills line up and look like they're going to go for it on fourth down. I would think that they're just going to try a hard count. Moss in the backfield. Play clock at five. Oh, they may have gotten it off in time, but you heard the whistle. That was at the time of the snap. Now we got some shoving on the near sideline here. Well, that was Diggs was on that side of the field one-on-one. -on -one. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Buffalo. This will be a 30-second timeout. And Buffalo uses their second. Remember, they called one very early. So timeout taken right there. And we'll get another look at it here just to see. There's a look at Sean McDermott in his fifth year. Directing the organization to their fourth playoff appearance. They won the playoff spot last week by beating Atlanta 29 to 15. So the third straight win getting him to 10 and 6 after they had kind of been up and down. But they point, Trent, the Bills do, to the second half of the Tampa Bay game where they came out, played well, took them to overtime after being down. And from that point on, they found far more consistency in their play. Well, they had a couple of close losses there back to back and Tampa Bay being one of those. And, and then now they've gotten on a roll here, three wins in a row. And as you said last week, securing a playoff spot and now trying to now trying to win the division for back to back years. So the Buffalo Bills who have not punted the last two games and that goes back to the Pittsburgh Steelers of 2004 the last time that has happened. This is the first punt in three games by Buffalo. They didn't punt the last two out there right now Matt Hawk to punt into the win. As we know, Burials is out. Cole is back. And this thing will die inside the 20 yard line. So we'll step aside. 44 yard punt and a 10 0 Buffalo Bills lead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Discover. Exceptionally common sense. Coors Light. Made to chill. And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. That's downtown Buffalo. We're in Orchard Park. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JB and Company scores news and headlines. The Verizon Halftime Report next here on CBS. After the first punt, 
in over two games by Buffalo. Here comes a first and ten for the Jets. They've withstood the early emotion of the game with a handoff to Carter, a tackle by Russo on that line, and no gain on the play. They stay at the 19 to Mel down on the field. Well, Kevin, Robert Sala has spent his entire first season as an NFL head coach living out of a hotel and a three-bedroom apartment with his wife, nanny, and seven children. Their home has been undergoing renovations. It was supposed to be done in early October. It's still not ready. Add to that, Coach Sala and his four boys get COVID over Christmas, so the boys quarantine one of the rooms in the apartment his wife and three other kids were in another and Sala at a hotel he said it's just been the most bizarre bizarre year and he's lost a lot of weight second down and 10 Wilson a Dermott with the block and he overshoots his receiver Carter out of the backfield followed by linebacker Matt Moana it's incomplete he says he's lost about 25 times he says I'm not lifting enough weights and that's what I used to do but I've lost weight and uh I guess that's part of being a first-year head coach in the NFL. You got a lot on your plate. Well, not, not food, obviously. Right, right. And, and it's managing your time, right? As a first-time head coach, trying to balance everything. You you want to watch fit. You want to watch film. You want to game prep. You want to do the things that you did as a coordinator. But as a head coach, you have a lot more administrative roles that you have to do. Ty Johnson in the backfield. It's third down and ten. Ball batted down. That is an incomplete pass. The whistles blow. Phillips right there, up the middle. Into the face of the rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson. Fourth down, here comes the punting unit for the New York Jets. Now that Buffalo defense has held opponents to two for their last 21 on third down conversion tries. They have been amazing. This is the number one defense of Buffalo in the NFL. Number one pass defense and the number one defense overall. In fact, they've been number one since week four and in the top four all season long. McKenzie watches the Braden man punt bounce to his liking and out to the 33 on a six yard return and brought down by Delshawn Phillips and others on that special teams for New York with a flag and a look at Phillips. Well, and the flag is all the way on the other side of the yes, field. Yes, it is. John Hussey will discuss things. As we thank again more of our crew, our engineers, Greg Wolf and Jeremy Thielen. Guys, thank you for putting us on the air every Sunday. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 33. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. Saran Neal, he'll pick it up. Touchdown pass of 10 yards to Diggs and the Bills on top of the Jets. Back in Orchard Park, wind chill of 22. Coming up, Verizon halftime report information from our CBS studios in New York. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, all of coach Bill Cowell. Verizon halftime on deck. First and 10, Singletary going up, and there's 57 at the bottom of the pile. Once again, CJ Mosley grinding for a gain there of six out to the 24 yard line. Well, the Jets' defense is the last couple of series. Remember, they stopped them on downs and then they forced them to punt. Need to get that offense going a little bit, but right now the defense is dialed in after the open, opening two possessions for the Bills produced 10 points. Jets' defense has faced the most rushing attempts of any defense in the league. A lot of times because they trailing so much and the opposition has a big lead, they run out the ball, but second down and four, another run, and tripped up initially that time with a nice play by Quinnen Williams. And trips him up for no gain. He got back to the line of scrimmage, the 24. Quinnen Williams makes the stop there. Activated off the COVID list, as we mentioned earlier. Well, like you said, Kevin, Quinnen Williams, great penetration, getting to the backfield, able to get his feet. Not allow that play to get going. It's third down and four. Josh Allen through the air is 10 of 14. Stands around the block, incomplete with a nice Quinn Williams rush and a Quincy Williams coverage on the play. The two Williams in there doing a nice job. Well, this is just a ball was thrown behind by Josh Allen under a little bit of pressure, but he could have stepped in and, and put put that ball on the outside shoulder for Davis so he can catch it, turn up field, and 
have an easy first down, but Davis was trying to pivot out of that route just on his back hip, not able to bring it in. Good job by the number 32 defense. Chucky Kentucky to Buffalo, three and out. A bad punt right here. Hawk lets this one go off the side of his foot and down inside the 48. And a shovel. We got a big fight here with players throwing each other down at the other end. We missed the worst of it. You can see this with the flags and the frustration. But there were two players. I only caught them turn out of the corner of my eye that were throwing each other down. Nick Bodden was one of them. Watch as it's towards the end of the play. Bodden's right there on the ground, and he's going after Ferguson, it looks like. Reed Ferguson is the long snapper. Ferguson gets knocked down twice, and so he decides to tackle him and, and bring in a wrestling move. Then all the next thing you know, everybody gets involved. It's the second skirmish we've seen. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Personal foul, receiving team, number 48. Personal foul, kicking team, number 50. Those fouls will offset on fourth down. We will replay fourth down. And they give up perhaps great field position. The ball right now at the 48 because the punter, Matt Hawk, well, that's put it off his... And that's what Sa that's what Salah's upset about. He's like, what do you mean you're letting him repunt? That was a terrible punt. It should be a dead ball penalty and it should stay the spot. He wants to, he wants to keep the he wants to keep the spot where it was. Because this, this ends up working in the Bills favor. Sarah Thomas is over there, the down judge, and she was talking to Salah. And so they'll punt again. And so Matt Hawk, I know that went off the side of his foot. He hasn't had much practice last couple games. He hasn't been punting. And this one is worse. This one is worse, if you can believe it. At the 45 of the Bills. My goodness. Now, you mentioned the wind. Yeah. But I'm not sure what the wind had to do with that. That was a 21 yard punt. Well, he's going into the wind, and they've been kicking that direction. They tried to kick it a little differently because the wind's affecting the ball, but that was a shame, Kevin. Well, the Jets have only had a little over eight minutes so far in 15 plays. They just got some worse news. Jamison Crowder now is out for the rest of the game. The calf injury that has bothered him and kept him out the last two is going to get him here in this regular season finale. So after two shanks, they'll begin at the 45. Michael Carter in the backfield, first and 10. And we got some movement on the offense of the Jets. False start. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, Kevin, I, I was just about to say this is the first time the Jets have had the ball in Bills territory all day, and sure enough, they get they get a false start to move them back to midfield. So that's on Denzel Mims, who was benched last week and is now playing because of Crowder's injury. So he goes out. Number three there. Is Tarek Black in his first NFL game elevated yesterday, a rookie out of Texas. So their top four receivers are gone. Moore, Berrios, and Davis. And now Crowder, first and 15. Out in the block. And the rookie quarterback looking for Mims, a second year receiver out of Baylor, and it's incomplete. Wilson through the air has gone two of seven. It'll be second down. Coverage on the play by Taron Johnson. Well, it's good to contain. First off, they're, they're going to take what's the contain that works to the outside. And Wilson, when he comes off of this bootleg, they do a good job of maintaining that leverage. So he can't get to the outside. They bring pressure up the middle. He can't just sit there and wait for it to get open. So he has no choice but to throw it to the outside where only his guy can get and it's incomplete. Edmonds gets ready. Second down, 15. Zach Wilson. Bill Tucker a block and it's grabbed on the play by the tight end Tyler Croft for five. He gets down to the 45 yard line. This is against the number one pass defense. What surprised a lot of people with the number one defense overall 
This is the first defense ranked that high to lead the NFL in yards allowed a game without a single Pro Bowl player this year. You and I couldn't believe it. We were talking about we even brought it up to the Bills players and there's they're not happy about it. They talk about the fact that they want to be the number one defense. That was a goal of theirs since the very beginning. Johnson in the backfield, third and ten, low, and may have been snared by Cole. It was. He picks up five right in front of Levi Wallace. And he's down to the 40, so it is fourth and five, and the offense stays out there. Well, and because he's able to come up with this catch. That is a great catch. It's an unbelievable My catch. Goodness. If he doesn't catch that, they're going to punt the ball. There, there's no way they go for it on fourth and ten. But at fourth and five at the 40-yard line, you know, all you're going to maybe net gain is 20 yards. Go ahead and go for it. That's what they're doing. Fourth down and five. And it is caught on the play by Cole. Front race beats Johnson. He'll beat Hyde, and he takes it in for six. Keelan Cole with a 40-yard catch-and-run touchdown. First touchdown reception of the season for Cole, and the Jets are down by now just four with the extra point coming up. Wilson initially looks his eyes to the left because he wants to see if Hoyer is going to come on the blitz. Hoyer decides to come down and rob. He's the one that comes over and almost gets the interception and nearly gets the tackle. But Wilson with the quick throw on the slant. And with Poyer dropping down from that backside, there's nobody there to stop the touchdown. Cole, his first touchdown reception this season. Wilson with his ninth touchdown pass of the year. Extra point by Pinheiro is up and in, and the Jets are down by three. Set up by a short punt back in 30 seconds after this. Medusa lived with a hideous curse. Ugh. I mean, the whole turning people to stone thing was a bit of a buzzkill, right? So she ordered sunglasses with Prime, one day delivery. Clever girl. People realize she's actually hilarious once you get to know her. Ugh, as if. Well, he was asking for it. Prime changed everything. Well, the defense of the Jets has played well, for sure. They got a good beginning start on that drive after a shank punt by the Buffalo punter Hawk at the 45-yard line of the Bills. And the number one pass defense in pro football of Buffalo has just given up their 12th touchdown pass of the season. That is still number one in fewest touchdown passes allowed. And the rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson, with the wind, was right on the screws with the throw to Cole. Well, going for it on fourth down and go back to the catch on third down that allows him to go for it on fourth down. We're going to take a look at the play right here. Now, I want you to keep an eye on You, you got Cole that's going to run the slant here. But keep your eye on Poyer on the backside. He's going to come down, and it looks like there's maybe blitz, and then nope, he's going to read the eyes. Watch as he comes over. He's going to go for the interception, but he can't get there in time. Because he comes down in that robber mode, there's nobody on the backside, and Cole's able to take it the distance. Poyer was with him initially, and then he was chased into the end zone by both Hyde and Johnson. But when your top four receivers are gone, more Berrios, Davis, and now Crowder with the calf today. Pretty impressive. First and ten. Allen back. Good cup. Downfield. Incomplete for Diggs. With the coverage on the play by Michael Carter. Second down and ten. Well, the Jets' defense has settled down here since those first two possessions. The Bills going down, getting a touchdown on the opening drive. Field goal on the second drive. But since then, the defense has settled down. That was the first touchdown pass allowed by Buffalo in the last three games. Allen through the air, 10 to 16. Second down and 10. By 20, what's that? The Terry out of the backfield, Spencer Brown the block. That ball is loose. His arm motion looked to be going forward. They're going to call an incompletion. They blow it dead. Incomplete pass by Allen. I thought maybe Quinnen Williams. Watch 95. See if he gets a hand on it. Nope. 
it just slips out of his hands. He, he tries pulling it back. As a quarterback, you start your motion, and especially on a cold day like today, you, you stop that motion. You can't maintain your grip, and the ball just scored it out. Good job by our camera people today, and all season long, Andy Italiano, John Zapola, and uh, Travis McKinnon. Guys, thank you for battling the elements. Doing a great job all season long. Third down and ten. Walking for block at the left tackle. Beasley is there. Pinnock with the hit. The ball looks to be a gain of nine, shy of the first, near the 33-34 yard line. That ball comes loose and is a fumble, but it hits out of bounds. Pinnock over there with the, the rookie out of pit. Who replaces Wilson, who was replacing Marcus May, comes in with the coverage, fourth and one. You see the punting unit out there. Cole goes back to retreat for the Jets inside the 25. And Hawk looking for a little redemption after his poor punt the last time. Another one, another shank, and out of bounds at the 45. Three straight shanks. One, there was a penalty. One, the last one. And then this one's only 20 yards, so three in a row. I almost think it's they're, they're dropping the it. He's dropping it a certain way. He's not dropping it. Now, watch how he drops the ball sideways. See how he turns the ball. Right. And see how he's trying to hit the side of it? So he's almost trying to do that because of the win, but it doesn't make any sense. This is three in a row now. See how he turns it sideways? That's the third time where he's turned the ball sideways. So I don't know if they're trying to prevent a return from the Jets. So they had talked about this during the week, but with the conditions the way they are, it definitely has worked in the Jets' favors the last three times. It's a first and ten run here by Tevin Coleman, who's played for the Falcons, Niners, and now the Jets on a gain of four. Chug it up the gut near the 48-yard line. So the defense of the Jets has held the Bills to turning it over on downs three consecutive punts and now the offense is coming off a drive where they had it on a 40 yard touchdown pass to Cole the last time they had it for Robert Sala's offense well and where the Jets were able to take advantage was when the Bills brought pressure on the last down on fourth down and bring pressure you get man to man you get a lot of isolations that's when the big plays can happen and that's when the Jets took advantage and down six running into Vera Tucker and brought down in the play by Russo who is the rookie out of Miami, they throw him for a one-yard loss back to the 47. So the Dolphins right now are beating New England. Win or lose, here the Bills would win the division if the Patriots lose. And we're at the two-minute warning. And a close one. The Jets holding strong against the Buffalo Bills. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verbo. Your together awaits. And by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Some of the best fans in the NFL here in Orchard Park, New York, in the Buffalo, Western New York area. Each win for the Bills this season, all 10 have been by double digits. Third and seven. They only lead by three right now. Congested pocket. Look out from behind. Here comes Addison. Retrieved by Wilson. Heavy pressure right there and a sack. It's the 11th sack in the last three and a half games. It's the third sack today. And the punting unit is out there for the New York Jets. Addison on the outside. He's just going to work. And, and Wilson, he's going to be looking upfield. And when he starts to flush, he doesn't realize Addison's right there. The ball comes loose. Wilson's lucky to get it back. Anderson comes up with his sixth sack of the season. They rotate so many guys on defense. They do, it's especially about that keeping line. everybody fresh. Wow, you're exactly right. Micah Hyde's going to go back and await the punt from Braden Mann. That one blocked a bit earlier if you're just joining us. Gets this away and gets off a nice high hanging punt. And high lets it bounce and grabs it on the fly. 
And then well tackled by Wild Goose. A former Buffalo sixth round pick, a 50 yard punt, Mel. Well, prior to kickoff today, the Bills made five separate donations of $50,000 to local organizations that are working to support the youth community through mentoring, education, and bridging the digital divide. It takes all of us to advance social justice and inspire change, and the Buffalo Bills work throughout the year to highlight this initiative started by the NFL. Al, thank you very much. Chilly day here battling the wind. We appreciate everything you're doing on that sideline. I know it is not comfortable. But, but <laughs> the wind is picking up, guys. That's all I'll say. I'm sure it is. Thank you. A fake handoff and a quick throw. And up the middle it goes. Beasley on the fly. Mosley with the tackle. 29-yard line. Quick hitter right there. 13-yard pickup and a first down. Well, they're in the two-minute here. Minute 30 or just under a minute 30. Buffalo has no timeouts. First down and 10. Buffalo trying to win, clinch the division title at home for the first time in front of their home fans since 95. And outside the Diggs. Wow, what a big mistake by the Jets, allowing Diggs to get out of bounds. Bryce Hall was there, pick up of about 16, and they'll place the ball at the 46. If they had just tackled him in bounds, it would have it would have rolled off another 15 to 20 seconds. Watch where it catches this ball, and he's able to get all the way, all the way out of bounds. Bills out of timeouts. <laughs> Allen has thrown a touchdown pass to Diggs in the first possession of 10 yards. Hey, go Jet, 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 Jet. Jet. Into the nickel, first and ten, Josh Allen. Into that win, knifing that ball, and it's caught by Beasley. Covered by Carter, got to the 48 and picks up two. Well, and that's one of the benefits with Josh Allen and his arm strength as he's able to throw right through this win. I talked to him about some of these previous games where he's at even windier conditions than he has today, and some of these passes you'd like to have touch on them you'd like to throw softer you'd like to make them more catchable but when you're dealing with wind conditions you just got to try and fire it through and it's not always the most catchable football but you got to be able to make those adjustments and fortunately for him he has that arm strength where he can fire it through second down eight jet, 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 jet. Omaha, Allen 14 to 21 132 and he's got Diggs, who's tackled by Eccles, wrapped up after a 12-yard catch, 39-yard line of the Jets. Another first down, no timeouts, clock is ticking. Over, over, over! That Singletary in the backfield. Allen, blocked by Dawkins, going deep, and he overshoots. Gabriel Davis with the coverage on the play by Bryce Hall. That double moves on both sides of the field. Gabriel Davis, watch, he gets the out and up. Gets the wheel route up that sideline. Just a little bit too far. On the other side, Diggs did the same exact thing. There were mirrored routes, and it was just a matter of Josh Allen being able to pick which side he wanted. They rolled coverage to Diggs' side, so the double move wasn't there. The double move to Davis was there, just missed the throw. No timeouts and second down and ten. Over, over, over. Omaha. Singletary the block. And outside they go for Davis and bumped out of bounds by Hall. Near the 25. 14-yard gain. Clock is stopped with 26 seconds. Just decide to bring pressure once again and to that side where the pressure is coming that that leaves the isolation in the one on one for Davis and not wanting to give up the big play gives up the con gives up the comeback route on the sideline Davis able to get it and get out of bounds 14 yards to Beasley 14 yards right there to Gabriel Davis the rookie out of Central Florida first and ten Spencer Bryant blocking up here goes Allen a couple of rushing touchdowns and flips it off to Knox and bets it out of bounds by Mosley. With the pitch out inside the 15-yard line near the 13-yard line of the Jets. I was wondering what he was doing because I said if you get tackled in bounds, you're not going to be able to stop the clock. You're maybe going to get one, if maybe two snaps. But he knew it all along. He was going to 
Fortunately for him, Knox stayed where he was, so it'd be a pitch backwards. He didn't start moving forward to make a block. Pretty clever play. That was, that was on both their parts. Knox being aware of what Josh was going to do with that football. No timeouts, first and ten. Five wide, Bates the block. Here he goes to the end zone, and it is Davis. And he's out of bounds on the chalk and incomplete in the back of the end zone. Is fouled on the play by Brandon Eccles. Great camera work here. Great job by our crew. Well, and that's where if you had had a timeout in your pocket, I bet Josh Allen would have taken off and run there, tried getting in the end zone, but had he been tackled in bounds, they probably wouldn't have been able to get a snap off in time. So smart play by him. So second down and ten. Morris the snap to the end zone, incomplete. May have been tipped perhaps by Ashton Davis on a ball intended for Diggs. And the clock at seven seconds. Well, and this goes back to the touch thing again, where I was talking about the wind, where you got to fire it through. Davis not able to get his hands on it, but Diggs, because that ball was thrown so firmly and, and so hard, Diggs wasn't able to make the adjustment to the back shoulder. Even though the wind didn't have a direct effect on the ball, the wind had a direct effect on the way that Josh Allen had to throw the ball. So a missed opportunity for a touchdown there. Jets D hanging tough. Third down and ten. And Allen incomplete. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Bryce that Hall. Covering, they're looking for Diggs. Well, Allen's coming to plead his case. He's like three seconds. He's like, you got time for one play, a field goal or a touchdown. He's coming to tell him, let's go for this. Let's go for the touchdown. He's start, look, he's trying to talk him into it. Pass interference, defense, number 37. Ball he plays the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Oh, they're going to say the spot of the foul is what, at the three-yard line, Kevin? That make, That's a whole yes. different deal than having it at the one-yard line. Three seconds left. The kicker, Bass, is ready, but the offense stays on the field. So just so you know how windy it is, see the spot of the foul, they're saying the spot of the foul was the three-yard line. Oh, they're bringing out the field goal unit. It's, it's a whole different deal. I, I understand if it's at the one and you decide you want to go for it. And Bottom line is the Jets' defense holds again. They did. They did. Keeping this a one possession game, and you know, if, if, if whether the field goal is good or not, it's a one possession game, and the Jets get the ball first coming out in the second half. So the defense doing their job. Tyler Bass, 21 yard try. He's already hit from 41. Oh, when he hits, he got it through. I thought my th look there for a second like he hit the upright. I, that was just a bad angle. I was watching the wrong angle. That, that's more it than anything else. A 21 yarder. He put right through. And that takes us to the end of the first half with the Buffalo Bills on top of the Jets, 13 to 7. Halftime coming up next after these highlights from Verizon or a Patriot loss. It's the AFC East again for a second straight season for the Bills. And look at the numbers they've racked up in total yards. And you look at that and you say it can't be 13-7, but that's exactly what it is, as the Jets' defense has been stiff. Well, and that's the thing. You, you look at the stats, and that's why coaches hate looking at stats. You know, the Jets have about half the amount of plays that the Bills had. They only had 60-some yards compared to 236. It's like it's no third downs conversions. It's just, uh, but yet here it is, a six-point game, a one-score game, and the Jets have the ball first. So yes. It's, uh, they, they've done a great job. I thought the defense did a good job of adjusting uh, after the, the two opening drives by the Bills put up the 10 points the Jets defense did a good job of adjustments in the way they were able to get them off the field and then listen they have no third down conversions on offense but on fourth down they hit a big slant that went for a touchdown and that's the, the seven points that the Jets have up right now each quarterback with a touchdown pass in this one and the wind blowing so hard it just blew it right off the tee 
So the Jets who lost to Buffalo back in the middle of November 45 17 and have lost four of five and seven of nine coming into tonight are down here at the half going to the third 13 to seven. Well, Kevin, in that game, Josh Allen threw for 366 yards, and there were four different running backs that had rushing touchdowns. So, excellent adjustments that the Jets' defense has made coming into this one. Into the wind. It'll be cold at about the 19 yard line. He's the one who caught the touchdown pass and ran it back. And uh, that's a return of seven yards to the field and Mel. Kevin, on that last offensive drive, Sean McDermott liked the way his offense got back into a rhythm and managed the clock. He said, We've got to play better complementary football. As for punter Matt Hawk, he said, He's just got to get his confidence back. Then I spoke with Robert Sala. He said, We've got to get the run game going. We've just had too many negative plays. As for his message to Zach, he said, Stick to your game. Don't try to play hero ball in the second half. Well, thank you. And here they go. The young quarterback, 5 of 10, 75 yards. He's got the receiver Smith in motion. Carter in the backfield, first and ten. Fake to Carter. Here they come up the middle. Poyer, they got him. Russo and Poyer, and Poyer came from the safety. It's the fourth sack by the Buffalo Bills, and they'll drive him back to the 13-yard line. Poyer's second sack of the season. Well, Wilson comes off the fake, and all of the receivers are out to the left for Zach Wilson. So even though Poyer with the pressure coming off the right side, and as soon as Wilson gets pressure, he starts floating to the right, there's nowhere for him to throw the ball. So what Melanie just told us about him not trying to be a hero, he doesn't have any turnovers in this game. Don't try and make something out of nothing. Go ahead and take the sack. Yeah, it's a negative play, but don't turn the ball over, and he did a good job of hanging on to it. It's second down and 23, and McDermott the block. Up the middle comes the quarterback, Zach Wilson on the fly and out of bounds and ushered there by Edmonds and has the first down. He's up to the 33 with a run of 20 yards. He's going to be short, looks like. All right, 20-yard line, so he'll be shy at the 33, needs to get to the 36, but a nice run right here. Excellent job by Wilson. Good job by the offensive line, giving him protection and giving him time. He gets to look down the field, decides no one's there because of the coverage dropping so deep after that sack on first down. Plenty of room for him to run and make this a manageable third down. Third down three. Back is Ty Johnson. He goes low, and he's got the wide receiver, Smith, who's hit on the play by Johnson. He picks up two. He's shy of the first by a yard. I thought Wallace was going to come up and get this interception. Watch how he drives on it. Had that ball been left to the inside, Wallace would have had an easy pick six. But because Wilson put it on the back shoulder, Wallace was not able to come up with it. Smith just grabbed his eighth reception of the season in there because Crowder is out, as is Berrios, Corey Davis, and Elijah Moore. Brayden Mann will punt. He back, they've got Micah Hyde inside the 15, wind dated. And Hyde on the bounce from the 10. Picking and poking his way and outside, and finally brought down there a nice tackle made by defensive back Kai Nakua. 17-yard return. Josh Allen and the Bills offense gets it when we return. Tonight, it's a new year, and that means new episode of The Equalizer. Queen Latifah returns in the show. The critics are calling fresh and reinvigorating. Don't miss The Equalizer tonight after 60 minutes on CBS. Deflected ball on first and 10 and incomplete as they get it after that New York Jet punt. And Allen through the air, 16 to 27, 157 with a 10 yard touchdown pass to Diggs. And Kevin, I think that was Quinn and Williams again. Getting, his, line, hand, getting his hand up in there. You know, he had a slant to Diggs, and Williams with his hand knocking it away. Josh Allen, second down and 10. Outside he goes, Diggs. Eccles shoved away with a little stiff arm. And he got it out to the 36 yard line with a gain of eight. 
Well, you called it a little stiff arm, yeah. but I, I think this I think this is going to get the fired up the fired That's up the jet good. sideline a little bit. Now why? So the way they've called ta taunting this year, I'm surprised with him looking down towards him that well, he turned he turned away. I know that's in slow motion, so it made it look worse than what it was. But he was he was close there, Kevin. He was close to getting that flag thrown. Third down and two. Heavy pressure on the move. Chased here by Phillips and out of bounds with Mosley steering him out of bounds. Nice run. 15 yards on third and two and a first down to the Buffalo 49. Well, yeah. Phil Phillips is the defensive lineman that drops into coverage, so he has the task of coming up and trying to chase Josh Allen and, and just not not the speed. That's uh, that's an unfair matchup for the Jets. First and ten. Make the Singletary and a quick throw and incomplete and looking for Gabriel Davis. This is our final broadcast of this regular season game and. Uh, thanks to the great folks in graphics who continually make these broadcasts so enjoyable and informative. Susie Fisher, and Paul Sapp, and Kachi Devalier, and a couple guys in audio, Gordon Gilliam and Alex Willis, all putting in the work each and every week for our CBS crew all over the country. Second down in 10. From the 49 of the Jets. First possession, second half for Buffalo, an incomplete. Knox went out. With the coverage of Bryce Hall going in where the pass was incomplete third and ten. Well Kevin that that that's two plays in a row last on, fir on first down uh, Gabriel Davis was looking one way and Josh threw it into the ground on the inside that time he throws Knox to the ends they've got one safety in the middle everybody else's they've got one safety in the middle everybody else is uh, either locked up in man or rushing the quarterback so Allen rushing the quarterback so. Allen's not on the same page as Knox, so bringing up third and long. Allen, one of his last six Trent. Six Trent. Right 20, what's up? Third down and 10. Dawkins a block. And look at this. That ball is thrown 15 to this. That ball is thrown 15 to this. That ball is thrown 15 in a row. And you see Josh Allen running off the field. He's not happy with that series of plays right there. Not so what do you the, what do you think the, the issue page. is? What yeah. do you think the issue is here? Well, I, th I think what it is is based on coverage, the receivers have the ability to run a dip or make an adjustment to the route. Right. Josh is reading it one way, and the receivers are reading it the other, and that's just something that's got to get cleared up. So the first thing Josh is going to do is is get a hold of the tablet, have the communication with the receivers to make sure they're on the same page moving forward. Fourth punt by Hawk, and he gets this one a rocket, which is going to go about. Five yards deep in the end zone. This is after punch of 21 and 22 yards. You hear the crowd? Well, he took it out on that ball. 49-yarder, <laughs> but it will go to the 20 on a touchback and a timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Geico. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. And by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. First ever Week 18 in the NFL and some pretty famous 18s over the years, including Hall of Famers Emmett Thomas, Charlie Joyner, Randy Moss, Peyton Manning. Here, Highmark Stadium. Where the wind chill now is 18. The wind is picked up. Temperature dropping. And the Jets defense holding the powerful Bills offense, forcing another punt. And it's a touchback to the 20 and a first and 10 for rookie Zach Wilson, who gives to Michael Carter, another rookie. And in the middle and into a nest of defenders, and not much there except to gain a two to the 22. The Jets are 4 and 12. No playoffs since 2010. 11th straight season. That's the longest drought in the NFL. But feel optimistic as fans of the Jets know in that area about what the young players are showing, and a lot of them are playing quality snaps. Three rookies out there the guard, the quarterback, and the running back, and a second down and eight from the 22. Snap by Feeney. 
Blocked by Morgan Moses and out of bounds. There was a lot of heavy pressure, and he was looking for Denzel Mims and Dane Jackson, who's taking the place of the injured Tredavious White on the coverage. Now watch how he throws this ball. I think it, I think he's initially trying to step up and throw it out to the swing, but then he sees it's covered. See how his eyes were looking towards the swing, and yet he threw it up the field. So a little bit of Patrick Mahomes no look pass there, but he was clearly throwing that ball away once he saw the coverage go towards the swing. Jets have not converted a third down today, 0 or 7. But that's what they liked about him, right? His different arm angles, the different ways he could get rid of it. Ty Johnson in the backfield, third and eight. Oh, look at Jack pointing as he sets up in the double hitch, and it's incomplete. And his intended receiver, Ty Johnson, the aforementioned running back, I don't know if he tripped or... But he was down, and the ball sailed over his head about 10 yards. Nonetheless, incomplete, three and out, and they'll punt. Well, Zach saw that Johnson was in, had man coverage on Milano, and he was just running an out route. So it was going to be three yards short of the first down, and because Zach had time in the pocket, he pointed to him, and, hey, run that wheel, get it up the sideline. And as you pointed out, Johnson tripped as he tried to run that, uh, run that move. Great man with the wind will punt. Not long, not high. Hyde standing away, everybody jumping away, and they'll down at about the 21-yard line. Just into the third quarter, 58-yard punt. Here comes Allen in the Bills offense on CBS. Just when you thought football couldn't get any more fun, here comes Nickelodeon with an NFL wild card game you can't miss. You just can't experience football like this anywhere else. Check out the NFL Wild Card game on Nickelodeon next Sunday, 4.30 Eastern. It's going to be wilder than ever. Here's a look at Mitch Trubisky, who is the very first Nickelodeon valuable player, trophy award winner. First and ten. Singletary's got a big hole, and from behind, who else? Jumping on him, C.J. Mosley tracks him down about the 27 with a burst of seven right there. He rockets for seven yards. Well, Kevin, based on the last series and the last three plays of that series with the miscommunication between Josh Allen, the fact that Singletary was running the ball very effectively early in the first half, they've kind of gotten away from that. We see the run on first down. I, th I think they're going to focus on this series to get Brian Dayball Get Josh Allen dialed in on this uh, on this run game here this series. The second down and three. Secretary again. Good looking block by the center Morse. Into the secondary hit by Davis. Brought down first down. He's up to the 38. Flag. John Hussey. Couldn't hear him, but it is against the Bills. Here's some of the highlights in this one. Nickified with the quarterback Allen finding Diggs for 10, initially ruled out. And there, for some reason, <laughs> we've got Ninja Turtles and hamburgers and Everything else. It's funny they show the I hamburger, but we really want one. There's none to be found. Second down and 13. Heavy pressure, messy pocket, incomplete. Eccles was on Diggs, and Allen hits the deck. An update from New York, James and Coach Cowan. Miami playing hard nose like their coach. Yeah, how about Duke Johnson right here going to the outside? One yard touchdown run. Miami now takes a 24-10 lead over New England. You guys look good in the slime and the burger, Kevin. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, because we've got a surprise for you coming up after this. So if Miami beats New England, it's Buffalo winning the East for a second consecutive year. But as they've already won three in a row, they'd love to make it four in a row heading to the postseason. Timeout taken by Allen on the third and 13. So in the last series, you saw some throws that weren't even near receivers, and now we see a early second half timeout taken by Allen well and, and really they got that run game going and it was the penalty that took them back and then and then it was the pressure that Allen so he threw an errant throw on second down now all of a sudden you're in third and long and 
communication's not there and you decide to take the, take the time out, it's it just, so we take a look at Josh look at Allen's that. last 10 pass attempts. And that's, again, why, that's why I thought coming into this series they were going to focus on the run, but all of a sudden penalties change, you know, changes all that. And again, he threw the three uh, uh, interceptions last week, had the problems against right. Atlanta, and he was hoping to rectify that coming off his worst passer rating as a pro well, quarterback. We, we, I mean, the weather wasn't very good last week. No, and, no, and two, two of the three balls were tipped uh, that either by the defense or, or at the line of scrimmage. And so it, uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it. 13 he got away from Franklin Myers and heaves it downfield and it's Davis working on Bryce Hall and looks like he's on the chalk and out of bounds and the defense once again there for the Jets they've been terrific in this game well Davis works all the way across the field as Allen is flushing to his right gets the, that left foot down but not able to drag the right great catch and by the way, the pressure in the pocket was heavy. Yeah, it was. It uh, once again, we pointed out at the beginning. Buffalo was very effective those first two drives. The adjustments that the Jets have made defensively. Jeff Albrook, the defensive coordinator, and the adjustments the players have made have made it very difficult for the Bills moving forward. Hawk to Cole at the 30. Berrios is out. And down he goes with some aggressive special teams. Neal and others were down there making the stop and allowing only a two-yard return on a 52-yard Hawk punt. And Hawk has two in a row, which are terrific. Sunday, make it Saturday afternoon. CBS will be at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. A big-time, Big 12 battle, West Virginia, number six, Kansas. We'll see you Saturday for more college basketball right here on CBS. Josh Allen today, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, 17 to 33. Zach Wilson, 6 to 13, first and 10. He got it off on the reverse right here and going down, trying to find his footing. Was Tevin with a gain of five? Was uh, Tevin Coleman got him? I wasn't sure if he tripped on his own accord or what, but down he went. Well, it was a low snap initially, so Z Zach was. Very fortunate to get the ball and get it handed off. And then you see Tevin Coleman trying to turn the corner. You know, that's going to be interesting. We had rain last night and this morning, and then it's gotten cold and it's just getting more and more cold. And, and you know, are, are, is the, the field going to start turning to ice? So we're going to have to. I mean, you can see the players, the players are starting to slip. I mean, I know it's, 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 it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Oh, what a great stick. Torpedoing through and stopping Coleman was Tremaine Edmonds. Losing on the play, too. Back inside the 35. Watch, watch Edmonds right in the middle of the screen. He's just going to come through. It's, it's, I don't even think anybody touches him. Watch how he times it out. He gets through. Or he did. Dude, what great collision. Johnson came off the edge to get around the feet of Coleman. So Coleman has to cut inside. But he cuts right back into Edmonds, who is untouched up the middle. Third down, seven. Running back is Ty Johnson. Messy pocket. Ed Oliver. Sack. Sack back to the 24th, fifth of the day by the Buffalo defense. And the Jets will punt it. That's the loss of 11 in the fifth, as we said, sack today. Kevin, you and I talked about this earlier in the game, but the amount of defensive players that they roll through, that they'd like to bring in, and Leslie Fraser keeps the guys rotated so you have fresh bodies. Coming into today, 33 sacks by 16 different players, and as you just said, the fifth sack of the day on Zach Wilson. Raiden man to punt. Hyde letting it bounce and got inside the 20 and out about the 17-16 yard line, a 61-yarder. Oliver comes through and will notch a sack for him, number six. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Trulicity and by Sonic. This is how we Sonic. And enjoying winter here in western New York. 
and enjoying their bills, but offensively they have been a little less than expected. They have not done a very good job, and the Jets' defense has been tough from the 16 after the punt. Allen first and 10, and overshoots his crossing fullback, Reggie Gilliam. Incomplete. Second and ten, and this is their resume over the last six possessions. Well, it really has been a struggle. Those two opening, the opening drives of the game, getting a touchdown and a field goal, but since then, not a lot going on. I'd like to thank more of our crew, Beth Turo, who's our tech manager, Sarah Hammond, who's also our tech manager, and Lindsay Plose, our tech director, and our production manager, Danny Koppelnik, and we thank them for all their great help all season long. Second down, 10, Allen is in a six in a row, and a handoff here, Singletary. Look at him dance and dive, and get brought down with the tackle by Phillips on a gain of six as he took it out to the 22-yard line. Excellent job with his vision on the cutback. I think that run was supposed to, you can see the polling guard Looked like the run was supposed to go to the right side, but with his vision and cutback, Singletary is able to pick up a nice game. Hey, Mike 56, Mike 56. Third down and four. What? What? Mike 20, was that? Bills four of 11 on third down today, and a yeah. middle incomplete with the intended receiver, Beasley, and the terrific coverage by the rookie, Michael Carter. That's incomplete. Another punt coming up for Buffalo. Well, that's a perfect way to say it. Another punt. Michael Carter, the second, in position, and ball's a little hot and out in front. Beasley not able to bring it in. A little slow getting up there at the end as well. Two, Mike, two Michael Carters. It's hard, we've got to differentiate between the Michael two. Michael Carter, that's the right. second, that's is right. the defensive. The defensive right. Michael Carter, the offensive <laughs> Michael Carter. And their numbers are right next to each other. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh, bobbles it, being chased, and tries to get it away. Hit by Hardy. The ball is free. Cobbled in right there by White. And then My plowed under. This punter has had some kind of day. An eight-yard eight punt. And a lot of confusion. What a disastrous day for Boy, him so it far. Been. It's just been. He's fortunate, fortunate just to get it off at all. Yes. But starts with him dropping the football. This penalty is going to be uh, probably illegal downfield would be my guess because it took so long to get the ball, kick the ball. We don't have a mic. We lost the mic again. Probably frozen. <laughs> and here's a Buffalo team that plowed and beat the Jets back in the middle of November 45 to 17 and today the Jets came in with a little chip on their shoulder we mentioned this earlier that the defensive coordinator Jeff Albrecht had said they were humiliated late in that game, a one-sided win for the Bills as Buffalo had deep passes, had a big lead late. They kept throwing. It's first and ten, and here comes Carter, wrapped up by Hyde, and picks up a single yard. Let's go to New York, James and Coach Coward. Surprise, Brady is locked in. Yeah, 44-year-old Tom Brady throws his 42nd touchdown on the year. The second today, this one to Mike Evans. Tampa Bay leads Carolina 24 to 10. Back to Kevin Harlan. James, thank you. A lot of games, of course, in this late window with direct bearing on swatting. Some of these games, I don't know if the team gets in or not. Second down eight. Wilson with pressure and hits the back of Edmonds on a pass intended for the running back, Tevin Coleman. They had the running back and the linebacker, and they wanted that. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Edmonds. Well, this ball is underthrown. Wilson throws it off his back foot, and 
if Coleman's able to come back to the ball, he could get a pass interference call because Edmonds doesn't even know the ball's coming. So if he's able to stop and go back for the ball, that's one of those ones you see a lot of receivers around the league do when they come back for the ball. It's DPI would have given him first and goal at the one. Just falls as an incomplete setting up a third and long. Croft in motion, running back Johnson, third down and eight. Vera Tucker the block. Up the middle they come with Phillips. Wilson getting away right there from Oliver. And hit the chalk. And out of bounds at about the 31. Well, that's huge. That's a sack. Well, instead of, I mean, so instead of a, what would that be? It's, it's about 39-yard field goal. Great coverage down the field. Wilson is moving around in the backfield. You can see that all the receivers are blanketed from a coverage standpoint. So nowhere for him to go with the football. But because he steps out of bounds before throwing it away, now all of a sudden, instead of a 39-yard field goal, you're going to have a 49-yard field goal. And in these conditions, makes it much more difficult. Pinheiro from 49. Wind dated. And he has gotten it from 49 yards away. And the Jets come to within three. The defense has been stout. And they've chipped away as much as they can. And they get this 49 yard field goal. He's in his fifth game for the Jets. He had a 51 yard field goal against Tampa Bay last week. And Pinheiro, with that field goal, has gone eight of eight. And Robert Sala, who came into this game and said, This is our playoff game. Well, we're obviously not going anyplace. This is the game that we're going to try to rally everybody, put our best foot forward, get momentum going into the offseason. And so far, they've accomplished that. Well, and they've, they've played better over the course of the last month, and that's what he wanted to see and what he has seen from this young team is you get some experience as the season goes along. Are you playing better football and learning from your mistakes early on? And yes, they've only won one game in the last three, but look at the loss to Miami, only seven points. Then you get the win at Jacksonville. They're in position to win the game against Tampa Bay last week, and they don't get it done with another fourth quarter late, late comeback from Tom Brady. But they've played better football, and here they are on the road at Buffalo with nothing to play for. The Bills are trying to win the division at home for the first time, as you said earlier, since 1995, and this is a three-point game. Jets have lost 11 consecutive games against teams in the division. They haven't beaten anybody from the AFC East since 2019. But they're putting up in their final game this season under a first-year coach and a rookie quarterback. A valiant effort, and this is in and out of the end zone. Touchback to the 25, and some of the headlines early on. What about Jacksonville's win over the Colts, and Indy is out. And then the Titans won, clinching the number one seed, and of course, only the one seeds from the NFC and AFC get the bye. The Steelers won in overtime 16-13, and T.J. Watt tied the all-time sack record of Michael Strahan of the Giants, and he finishes the regular season with 22.5. So after the kickoff and after the 49-yard field goal, it's a first and 10, and they take it with Moss and a gain of two. Let's send you to New York, James and Coach. Carolina narrowing the deficit. Uh, by Sam Darnold right here off the back foot's gonna find Robbie Anderson, perfectly placed ball. Tampa Bay now leads 24 to 16, extra point pending. You got it one down there now in Tampa Bay. Back to Kevin Harlan. Smell your name, Robbie Anderson, to Jets fans. It's a second down and eight. Allen. And he gets this off to Moss. A nice hit right there by Quincy Williams, and that's only a gain of three. Quincy Williams with the hit. Second leading tackler. He has been a starter for all but four games this season. Comes up with a nice hit across the middle of the 30. Can't say it enough, Kevin. How impressed I am with the Jets defense and, and what they've done after those, those two drives to start the game, the adjustments they've made. And if you think about what they've done since halftime, the Bills had 236 yards at halftime, and now they're sitting on just about 40 yards here for the third quarter. 
Third down five. Allen and looking for Knox and he got him. Working on Carter. Terrific throw with a nice catch. And he's down to the 42 of the Jets on a 28 yard catch. Kevin, you couldn't throw this ball any more perfectly. This is just basically just handing it off, right? I mean, he doesn't have to do anything except put his hands up, and it drops right over the shoulder. Very good coverage by Michael Carter II, and just a better throw from Josh Allen. Offensive line of the Buffalo Bills today for a second straight game together. McKenzie in the backfield, first and ten. It goes to McKenzie, the center Morris blocking along the Spencer Brown. Finds the door and out of bounds, pushed by Hall. He gets down near the 30, has the first down, a run of 11. Flag thrown. a look at McKenzie who rushes for a ninth time this season I don't think his Mike air goes personal foul low block offense number 71 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul first down that's on Ryan Bates he has been so valuable for this team and on that line, but he's called here. Yep, on Mosley. You can't chop block nope. when you get downfield, and, and that time he was clearly downfield. So now it is first and 15 to the Jet 47. With Zach Moss in the backfield. He goes down that set. Oh, dropped by Davis. Coverage by Bryce Hall. Football's iconic show inside the NFL. Streaming Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Paramount+. Plus. We were talking about the Jets earlier. They have draft picks. Two in the first ten. They've got cap space. Fourth most cap space. They let go of Shaq Lawson. and that relieves some time. And Neesman gone too. Second and 15. Not much there. Moss, Carter's on him. Gain of a yard to the 46. And they've got all these rookies that have played a lot of important snaps all season long. Well, the crowd not happy with that last call, but yes, the Jets are set up. When you look at the draft picks they have, the amount of money they have, and the experience that the rookies are gaining, they showed a replay on the board of the Jets tripping the running back, and uh, that's what they're looking for was a tripping pill. That's why you heard all that booing in the background. It's third and 14. They need the 32, and here comes Allen. And broken up beautifully on the play. It's Quincy Williams, the linebacker. And they were going for Beasley. And Mosley and Williams have played terrific games. And the defense of the Jets, this is the number 32. Think of that. It's yeah. the 32nd ranked, the dead last defense in pro football, and playing. Like their counterparts who have the number one defense in the well, NFL. And, and, and Williams really could have had an interception on that when it hit him in the hands. It just. Heck, heck of a response they had. This may die inside the five. And they'll maroon the Jets at the two. Good punt right there by Hawk. 43 yarder. And after a couple shanks, he has settled down and punted well. For the playoff bound Buffalo Bills who clinched a playoff spot last week with their win over Atlanta trying to win the East title today if they win or New England loses. Well the defense trying to get this crowd cranked up they got them down in the end zone 
near the goal line trying to get that into the field making it hard on the Jets. Don't be surprised if the Bills bring pressure bring the blitz trying to cause a negative play down here around that goal line even get even get a safety. Wilson's got Carter in the backfield and here's the handoff to the rookie Carter. He tries to trudge his way ahead. He is tackled by Russo. He picks up three and he lunges to the five. Well, when they did, they, they brought pressure off the edge. Just not able to get him down and Jets picked up a couple extra yards. The run game the last couple weeks for the Jets has been the number one running attack in the NFL. And overall, the number nine in yards per carry. That's the end of the third. Closer than a lot of people thought. Clearly, Bills on top by three, going to the fourth on CBS. Well, the Jets in that third quarter had the win. They ran 13 plays, minus three yards. Here they go to start the fourth with a second and seven. Michael Carter and hit on the play by Taron Johnson. Comes up with a nice stick. No gain on the play. So here is a look through three quarters of football in time of possession. If you look at plays, yards, and time of possession, you would not say this is a three-point game. No. But that's where special teams come into play. The field position that the Jets have gained through special teams has set up their scores, and here they are pinned down near their own goal line. They have not converted a third down today. They've got Ty Johnson in the backfield, and it's third down and seven for Wilson. And he has the ball caught on the play by Black, and they see he got it, his first NFL catch. Tarek Black elevated yesterday, the rookie out of Texas with all the injuries in the receiving core. In front of Wallace, he picks up 12. What a terrific catch. The hip hit in, and the Jets' first first down since late in the second quarter. And here's a handoff on first and 10. They get it off quickly, and it's Ty Johnson thrown for a loss of two in Black. How about that is your first catch? That I thought, was I thought Wallace had a chance to get the interception. <laughs> was he was going to undercut it, and the Jets weren't so sure, so they went up and got the ball snapped quickly. Second down and 12. Wilson through the air, 7 of 15, 88 yards. He does have a touchdown pass, a 40 yard catch and run by Cole. Carter in motion, pressured on the play, got away from Hughes, and then was tripped up and taken down with Milano getting him around the shoe, and that was what brought him down, and that is the seventh sack for the Buffalo Bills. Well, Hughes, Hughes almost had him. Yeah, Hughes is all over him, and Milano got him. Yep. Milano with his third sack of the season. Seven sacks by the Bills defense, most by them since they had seven against Miami in week 11 of the 2019 season. Third down, 19. Morgan the block. Oh, did it hit the back of his lineman? That was McDermott. It's incomplete. It's fourth down. Let's go to New York. James and Coach Coward. Uh, a lot of weapons gone. It's going to be rough with Tom. Yeah, Tom Brady, his third touchdown of the day. Second to Mike Devins, his 43rd on the year. And they lead 31 to 10 over Carolina. He's seen it all. Back to Kevin Harlan. Brady just gets better with age. And this was a year where he had accomplished so much as it was. Here is the punt. And Hyde on a bounce. Smartly waits and then brought down about the 49. So good beginning field position for McDermott's Buffalo Bills. 53 yard punt with a nine yard Hyde return. You're looking at field judge Greg Gotro. It is his 20th season in the NFL and is retiring this year after two decades on the field he served as an official in Super Bowl 43 
Pittsburgh against Arizona. One of the best in the business. We wish him the best. First and ten. And here comes uh, Allen after the Jets punt. The pump fake and the drum. Look at him go into the secondary. Knocked out by Panak. And that's what he does so well. Ran last week well. 32-yard gain. First down. Buffalo at the 19. Watch the pump fake right here. That's what freezes him, and that allows him to get up the field. The Jets have not been able to get a lot of pressure on Allen. He hasn't been sacked the entire day. The passing game hasn't been going very smoothly, just around 50% completion. So he takes off and run, uses his legs. He has over 700 yards rushing on the season and six rushing touchdowns. So taking advantage of his legs on that. First and ten, Singletary, Morris with the block, Mosley with the tackle, they drag him down at the 17, gain of two, back to our CBS studios, JB and Coach. Not much time left for New England, Bill. Yeah, Mac Jones is going to find Brandon Bowen from 18 yards out there right now. They cut the lead to 10, Miami lead 27-17, five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. The Bills in indistinct tones of Kevin Harlan. <laughs> Thank you. Buffalo with the win or a Patriot loss will win the AFC East for a second consecutive year. Second down and eight. Guys, thank you for those updates all day. By 20, what's that? Dawkins the block at the left tackle. Here goes the quarterback again. This time he is ripped down on the play. Coming through, Quinnen Williams. He picked up two. He got to the 15. It's either been Quinnen Williams or Quincy Williams today, and a lot of Mosley. They've been very all three of those guys. We, we, just pick out, just pick out one of, just say Williams. <laughs> I know Williams, it. you got a 66 percent chance, right? It's, it's like one of those three have been making plays all over the field. I mean, you can't believe they're the 32nd ranked defense. How the way they Not, played yeah, today? Yeah, exactly. Third down and six. Right, Messy pocket, he gets out. He's here by Rankins. Oh, he found his receiver. That is Isaiah McKenzie to the five and tackled by Hall. Caught it in game nine on third and six, and it's first and goal. They'll put him at the six. McKenzie's on the right side, and he's working out. He's working in. He worked up the field. He comes back. Then at the last second, he goes the other direction, and that's a dangerous, dangerous throw Oof. as a quarterback to be jumping back. And floating it across your body. He was lucky he didn't step out there. It was very close. Paul gets him to the six, first and goal. It's single Terry Morris the block, and in there they got Evan Myers among a couple, including Quincy Williams, limiting him to a gain of two to the five. Second and goal. Singletary today, 16 carries, 77 yards. Allen's got 57 rushing on the afternoon. And through the air, 205. But he has just hit 50% of his passes. And Allen is at 64% in the season, second. And goal. Matt McKenzie, trouble pass to Knox to the one. And hit by Shepard and picks up four. Knox is the tight end. Knox is lined up off the ball to the right-hand side. Watch the play fake to McKenzie. Pulling guard, flips it forward. It's used around the league. That little shuffle pass to the tight end. That's a Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, Kelsey play, yeah. exactly. Kittle's, Kittle's obviously done it as well. Third and goal at the one. Well, I don't what? Singletary, and he corkscrews in for the touchdown. Watch Singletary, isolation, one-on-one -on -one right there. It gives him a little nod to the outside and then spins it back to the inside. Mosley trying to make that contact to keep him out of the end zone. and. Not able to get it done. And the big play on the drive, the 32-yard run by the quarterback, Allen. Singletary gets his seventh rushing touchdown. 
Last week over 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns. This week sitting at 78 yards now rushing and that first touchdown run of the game for him. That's the fifth touchdown by Singletary in the last five games. Bass puts it through 20 to 10. The Buffalo Bills on top of the Jets. If they go on to win an AFC East title for a second consecutive season. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon, the official 5G network of the NFL. Bud Light Seltzer. If you drink, don't try. Decide to run. And buy. New from Papa John's. Try the New York style pizza. Well, that was back in 1991. The Bills were the last Buffalo team to win back to back AFC titles. It was their fourth consecutive AFC East title. And they're zeroing in on their second in a row. But they've not won two in a row since they had the four straight from 88 to 91. Fans here have stuck through a just a nasty day weather-wise with very significant wind. And wind chill at about 18. The NFL playoffs are here. It all kicks off with Super Wild Card Weekend. Action gets started with a Saturday doubleheader, then a Sunday tripleheader, and for the first time ever, Wild Card Monday. Three days, six games, one epic weekend. The road to Super Bowl 56 in L.A. starts here. Zach Wilson is 7-16 today through the year. He is throwing a touchdown pass to Cole. He got a field goal from Pinero. 49 yards. First and 10. Moses driven back at the right tackle, and it's incomplete. And they're looking right there for Jeff Smith under pressure there and all afternoon. Well, the Bills have seven sacks on Zach Wilson on the day. And to make matters worse, they're going into the wind right now, the direction they're facing here in the fourth quarter. So expect the Buffalo defenders. It's going to be like a track meet. They know they have to throw. They're down two scores. They've got to find a way to come back. So expect that pressure to pick up even more bills had five sacks last week against the falcons that means they got 12 sacks in the last two weeks for the number one d in the nfl second and ten low and incomplete looking for black let's go to new york gb and coach Coach, I have the nerve to say New England's running out of time. No, they are not, JB. It's Damian Harrison, one yard out. I know there's a little bit of time left, but they only trailed uh, Miami 27 to 24. And back to Kevin Harlan. That's why taking care of business here for the Bills is their first priority, Trent. Well, it is. And anytime you can control your own destiny, that's what you want. You won't have to rely on someone else. And right now, the Bills are taking care of taking care of things here in order to report. Third down in 10. There goes Wilson dodging, but can't get past the grasp of Jerry Hughes. They were coming at him from every angle. It's the eighth sack by the Buffalo defense. They had 33 sacks coming into today. They've got 18 over the last four games. They brought different amounts of pressure throughout the course of the day, this time only rushing four. They come off the edges to the outside. They force him to step up. There's nowhere for Wilson to go. Can't escape, as you said, sack number eight. And the eight sacks by the Bills, the most they've had since they had 10 against Washington back in 2011. Braden Mann sends this to about midfield into that wind, which gripped that ball and threw it right down, and Barton will get it. 28-yard one. 28-yard punt. All right, so here's where we stand right now. Cincinnati lost in Cleveland. Vegas and the Chargers will play tonight. We just saw that Patriot update from South Florida. Tennessee has won, and the Chiefs won yesterday. And Pittsburgh won, 9-7 and won the Steelers. They took care of Cleveland on Monday and then traveled to Baltimore and won there. So, that's the way we stand and the Bills Earlier in the season, Kevin, we were all wondering, is that tie going to come into play? Is that tie going to have a factor yeah. when it comes down to the playoffs? And, and sure enough, it does. Pittsburgh is in unless Chargers and Raiders tie first and ten 
for Smith. Franklin Edwards fell. Downfield they go. It's caught by Gabriel Davis, the second-year receiver. Got the ball. Hall got him. And they're down to about the 21 with a catch of 27 thrown into a thicket of defenders downfield. Josh Allen is the number one quarterback in the NFL on play action passes, attempts, completions, yards. That time coming off the play fake, they've gotten the run game going last series, and that time coming off the run fake, hitting Davis up the field. It's nice having the wind at their back as yes, well. Yes, it that's, is. That's, 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 a, that's a difference as well. But that's by design. Singletary on first and ten. Big gap up the middle. And he machetes his way down to about the nine. And some extra talking after the play. The extra lineman was Tommy Doyle. He's 72. He said, wait, I don't even play that much. I don't want to get involved in the fray. It's a gain of 12 and a first down. And they put it to the nine. There are those numbers on play action pass by Josh Allen. Good numbers there indeed. It's first and goal. I think what Doyle was thinking is, I don't want to get a fine, so I better get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Get, get a He's like, wait a second, it's not worth it. He's a rookie from Miami of Ohio, and he comes in as the extra blocker. First and goal at the nine. Outside, Davis could not snare it. Incomplete. While we thank more of our great CBS colleagues, Brian Sealing, our associate director, our associate producer, Brian Maher, Ryan Mason in graphics, and Patrick Vega in graphics, a great job, and Drew Larson, our statistician in the truck, and a almost four-decade veteran in the NFL, Pat McGrath in our booth, with the terrific and versatile Larry Costigan as our editorial consultant. And we thank all these people for their terrific work all season long. Second and goal at the nine. Time. The run to about the two, the three-yard line. Wow, the official got hit really hard over he there, did. Kevin. He did. Oh, he's up and moving. Yeah, is, there, is there a penalty yeah. thrown? Well, and, and, and you can clearly see there's a pit flag was just thrown. And well, they, it was probably thrown because they were yelling at the officials for not having a penalty. Lost his cool a little bit. I thought it was hit out of bounds. I thought it was going to be a penalty, and then I was worried about the official. And there's somebody down, and that's a foul. jet. Defense. After the goal, automatic first down. That's Kyle Phillips, who was activated off the COVID list Thursday, and he got caught up in the wash, it looks like, on this one. Oof. It's Holding on to that left knee. Well, the... Watches Phillips, he gets oh, hit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he gets hit underneath. Now, watch the official. Fortunately for him, that wall is padded because the back of his head hits the hits that, the wall. But that's not our guy that's retiring after 20 years, is it? Well, he would Gotro? be. He, Gotro is number 80. I couldn't catch the number I of that official you. that went down. I can't. But Phillips, that. Uh, that was a knee that was the a side. Yeah, that was nasty. That was. Hopefully, he can get up and. Walk it off on his own, but Kyle is up. The good thing for him is he didn't have his leg planted when it right. got hit. It was, he was up in the air, so that's a good sign right there. Good point. We've got two veterans on our crew that are retiring, and uh, from the every weekend chore of CBS NFL football coverage. Our audio man, Phil Adler, there may not be a better one in the business. And Kevin Kellogg, who's retiring after this season, one of the veteran cameramen in this business. And Kevin, we thank you. He's not retiring necessarily from the business. The uh, Arizona-based Kevin Kellogg will be still working, but as will Phil. But in an uh, in, uh, NFL capacity for CBS, we wish them the very best we thank them for many years of great quality service and friendship on the road covering the NFL Kevin so, the different people you've named throughout the day that are in the truck and out here manning the cameras and the sounds and down on the sideline it's uh, 
We have a great crew. It's uh, it's our family it's away from our it family. Is. It's, a, it's a special crew to be a part of. And every crew that broadcasts the NFL that all you folks watch every Sunday and Monday and Thursday and Saturday, all the same. Great professionals. First and goal. And Singletary grabbed from behind. And Ronald Blair got him. The six-year veteran threw him for a two-yard loss. Back to about the three. Well, I think Josh Allen got stepped on as he was stepping away from center. He tripped like or it, something because yeah. he – and I was surprised he didn't hang on to the ball. It almost looked like he flipped it to Singletary. Watch it. Yep, he gets stepped on there as he's falling away. By the right guard, Daryl Williams. Well, he did. He yes. handed it off. I, th I thought maybe he flipped it to him, which is really dangerous down inside the five. They've had a lot of maneuvering on this offensive line, too. A lot of changes. But this is the second consecutive game with the same group. Second down goal. It's Gabriel Davis. Echols read it well and grabs him. And got him. And no gain on the play. On this offensive line, only the center Morse has played every game and that stayed the same. But they've had three different, two different left tackles, three different left guards, four different right guards, and two different right tackles. But today they've got what they think now is what they're going to take into the playoffs. And Bates has been a very important part of that. And when Dawkins came off the COVID list, he really solidified things because then they moved Spencer Brown to the right tackle. Well, I was going to say, Spencer Brown's moved around for a rookie to move around as much as he yes. did. But he, he's uh, he's kind of anchored himself in a right tackle. Third and goal at the four. Singletary looking for a block, and he got it from McKenzie, and he takes it in for six. And a four-yard play. And the Bills are going to win the AFC East at home in front of their crowd for the first time at home, they'll clinch since 1995. Well, the crowd knows it. Just look at them dancing around, celebrating. Yes, there's several minutes left in the game, but they, they feel it and they know it. Singletary's got two touchdowns in this one. One on the ground and one through the air, a four-yard Little pass. There's some terrific blocking ahead. And they take it in. A lot of yards. The extra point by Bass. And it's a 27-10 Buffalo Bills lead. Sometimes it's best not to count on anything else to get you where you want to go and just handle business yourself, and that's what the Bills, on a day they have not looked very sharp on offense, have done. Well, it started off the game that they looked sharp, and then the Jets and their adjustments, and obviously the, the weather and the wind is, has had a big part of it as well, but anytime you can control your own destiny and take matters in your own hands, and that's what the Bills had an opportunity to do today, and Offensively now over 400 yards defensively the Jets only have 62 yards of offense as, as the Bills have sacked Zach Wilson eight times today. Jets have the fewest yards in franchise history for a single game. They had 72 against the Bengals back in 1976. They already set off fireworks here, Kevin. They're ready to, they're ready no, to roll. Barring a disaster, <laughs> they will stay in the number three slot in the AFC, win the division for a second consecutive year. And the kickoff is in and out of the end zone touch back to the 25 to the sideline melanie collins well guys this could end up being one of those memorable weekends of a lifetime for bill center mitch morris not only does it look like they'll clinch the afc east at home today in front of bill's mafia but as soon as this game ends mitch is catching the first flight out to kansas city to be with his wife caitlin who will be induced with their second child on monday morning the gender is a surprise but what a 24 hours it will be for the Morris family. And early congratulations from all of us. Indeed, they got him from Kansas City. And he has been a great technician at that center position. Wilson first and 10 and sacked again. Sacked again and that by Epinesa. 
And the ninth sack registered by the Buffalo defense and a player down is, I can't tell that, that may be Morgan Moses, the right tackle. Well, it's one of those things when, when the pile happens and people fall into the back of your legs, I think that's what happened with Moses here. So Moses is down. Moses has played so much of this season. You may recall they began with Becton in the opener at the left tackle and George Fant at the right tackle. Then Becton went down and they moved Fant from right to left and they brought in Moses and you can see get, that's that's a lot of weight and a very awkward contorted position for a man that big. In the last game of this what we talk about coming over about injuries in the last game of the year and you want to avoid them as much as possible and there's a timeout. Well, Morgan Moses is off under his own power which is good. Veteran has played well. Edoga will take his place at that right tackle. Second down and 20 after the ninth sack by the Buffalo Bills defense, the number one defense in pro football. As we welcome new audiences from around the country. Zach Wilson, here he goes, trying to throw it away and incomplete. And dropped by the rookie running back Michael Carter with heavy pressure from Harrison Phillips. And this is a quick look at our day. Nine sacks by that number one defense. And the New York defense, number 32 in the NFL, Trent Green, has played, for the most part, a very good game against a tough offense of Buffalo. Well, and I know fine, uh, the, the final statistics aren't going to show that for the job that the Jets' defense had done, but they kept him in this game the entire time, and, and really it was a three-point game coming into the fourth quarter. So good job on, on their part, just the offense not able to generate anything. Third and 20. And Croft could not hold on to it on a low wobbly pass. And you see Cam Lewis trying to take it the other way. It's fourth and 20, and here comes the punting unit for the New York Jets, who come in 4 and 12, missing the playoffs for an 11th consecutive season, and having come in this one, losing four of their last five. This will be the Jets' 10th punt of the night on this chilly day in western New York with the Wind chill at about 18 degrees and snow in the forecasts and the punt gripped by that wind. Well, and I think we're going to see Mitch Trubisky. I think that's it for Josh Allen. So the Buffalo Bills will change quarterbacks and bring in Mitchell Trubisky for the final 312. New England has lost. So right now officially the Buffalo Bills are the champions of the AFC East for a second consecutive season. It's the first time they've won back to back division titles since the 88 to 91 run with Jim Kelly and the terrific Buffalo Bill teams coached by Marv Levy. Today, Josh Allen was 24 of 45, 239, with two touchdowns, and his running back, Devin Singletary, with 19 carries and 88 yards and two touchdowns, one on the ground and one through the air. And this is Zach Moss on first and ten, getting brought down on the play by Will Parks, who joined the team about three weeks ago and lost of about a yard. Tonight, the Chargers and the Las Vegas Raiders. Pittsburgh had a big overtime win, Trent, earlier today in Baltimore. Well, that was a huge win for them, and really it's a... With the Chargers in Vegas tonight, coming up a little bit later, the winner gets in, the loser goes home. Obviously, there's always the outside possibility of a tie, but... Pittsburgh waiting on the result of that game. A lot of resilience with those Pittsburgh Steelers. Sixth time they've come back and won while trailing late. Second down and 12. Take the Moss. And they toss downfield, and it's caught right there by Jake Kumaro, former Packer. A 15 yard grab by number 15 down to the 43 yard line of the Jets. And for Kumaro, just his second reception of the season. 
Well, and that'll get us to the two minute warning. And if the Jets don't use their timeouts, the Bills could just take a knee. It's the two minute warning, and the Buffalo Bills are officially the AFC East champions. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Visa, a network giving small businesses tools to grow. First time the Bills have clinched a division title at home since 1995. And the victory formation, Trubisky under center. So the Buffalo Bills will go to 11 and 6. Want to remind you the kickoff of the Chargers and Raiders is coming up at 822 Eastern over on NBC. This crowd is jacked. They are celebrating a fourth playoff berth in the five years of head coach Sean McDermott. And winning the title in the division for a second consecutive season. And when we asked Sean this week, are you going to be keeping an eye on that New England game? And he said, I'm just focused on our team playing. I want us to play well and to get some momentum going into the postseason. And that's what they've done. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes in a report on the American job market and the difficult job of NFL kickers. Followed by a new episode of The Equalizer, plus new episodes of NCIS Los Angeles and SWAT. That's tonight on CBS. For the New York Jets, they will go to 0-12 against their division over the last couple years. They will finish the year losing five of the last six, but there is optimism with all the rookies, two high draft picks, and a lot of cap space that they go into the offseason with. The Bills have won it. And they've won the division. Special thanks to our producer, Ken Mack, and our director, Suzanne Smith. Thanks to the whole crew. I've really appreciated the season, Kevin. It's been great working with you once again. And always enjoy it, Trent. Of course, Melanie down on the sidelines and everybody that we've recognized throughout the game down in the truck and on this crew. It's a great crew to be a part of. You have a feeling that Allen and Wilson are going to see a lot of each other over the next decade or so in this division twice a year. Two young quarterbacks on the rise. So the Buffalo Bills are set at number three. Chargers and the Raiders tonight. Pittsburgh at 9 7 and 1. Hoping. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, then the equalizer, NCIS Los Angeles and SWAT. For Trent Green, Melanie Collins, and Gene Steratore, this is Kevin Harlan saying so long from Buffalo. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.